Mike, man, thank you so much for joining me. Um, Mike Zone is a, for those of you that are just tuning in, Mike Zone's a great friend of mine. We were teachers together in Harlem. Um, and really just a, just a dear friend of mine, uh, kind of one of those guys that's always been there for you. So um, the other piece, Mike, is that, you know, you, you have shown that at your age, because you're older than me, do you mind if I ask how old you are? Yeah, I'm 53. Okay, so I'm 51. Um, and you're in fantastic physical condition. But in addition to that, you're also um, a counselor, psychologist, resilience coach. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm kind of blessed, really, because what I got is I got, I'm in a predicament where I have a high level of calcium in my heart. Um, okay. The last well, 10 years, it's yeah. gone up a lot. Uh, yeah. If you have the line that's kind of like, okay, here's low risk. If you're above this line, I'm like there. Mm -hmm. And here's high risk. I'm a little bit above it. Right. Um, and I want to reverse that. Yeah. Also, I am getting older and I don't want to be frail and fragile. I don't want to be a victim. I want to be able to defend myself. I want to be strong. Yeah. Uh, but I know who I am and I'm kind of struggling with this thing where um, I've just been doing this for 51 years. Yeah. My heart, I've desired <laughs> to be in better shape. My mind is, is in the right place. I want you know, yeah. oh, I'm going to go work out today. And it just doesn't happen. Right. Um, and I know you, it's, it's, it's important to your life that you get yeah. out and work out every day. So um, just with that being said, um, what's your thoughts on all that? <laughs> That's kind of a big giant load there. Yeah, no, you're not alone. Uh, yeah, so I'm um, a, a licensed uh, clinical social worker, and you know, I have a background in uh, counseling and social work um, and you know, education and coaching. Um, and I had to ask myself the same questions you did. I, I, I fortunately did not have a medical issue hanging over me. Um, and that, but that certainly can um, impact, um, you know, sadly, unfortunately, those things can be motivating sometimes, right? The fear. Of Absolutely. Course we, yeah. And we don't want to be fear based, right? We don't want to be pushed towards it. We want to be pulled towards something, right? And so coming up with um, reasons why you, we, we want to do something is, is really important. So when I, when I coach people or even when I counsel people, one thing that I do, Mark, is I, I differentiate between motivation and procrastination. They're not the same. They're different. So when we procrastinate, there's a reason why we want to do something. Now, it could be for our health. It could be because our boss will fire us if we don't. I mean, there could be we have to, you know, pay the government on April 8th, 15th, you know, whatever it is. Um, but there is a reason, and we know what that reason is, and we just have a hard time doing it. That's procrastination. A motivation issue is we don't even know why we're doing it. We don't even have the motivation, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. There's no motivation. So... One thing that a person can ask themselves is, why do I want to do this? Right. And you've mentioned that there's a there's a medical issue. Now, that is more of a fear based mm -hmm. motivation. Correct. Right. That's pushing you towards something whether rather than pulling you towards something. And that's OK. I mean, any motivation can be helpful, but ideally we want to be pulled towards something. Um, so that's the first thing that I wanted to just share with you and, and, and the viewers, that there is a difference between procrastination when we have a reason, we just can't get ourselves to do it. And what's that about? That's procrastination. Right. And we, we don't even have a reason in the first place. So then we, which is motivation, then we need a reason to do it. Okay. Well, I, I, I it's interesting that you say that because that was something that I, I just wrote down as you were talking is is I do I don't like the idea that that the motivation is a negative that it's kind of like well you know I risk a heart attack if I don't get off the couch kind of thing right. um, well Mike would you consider the desire to be just uh, physically stronger for um, you know a time of trouble maybe somebody breaks in your house you're defending your family, like just, you know, because again, 
you know, you know that we're not necessarily, you know, it, it, it's harder as you get older. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. um, would that be a good factor? Like, what do you yeah. think about that? Like, what, yes. what would be a good reason, like a motivating factor that you'd say that's a good motivating factor? Yeah. So I think there are, there are many reasons. I said, uh, I think the most common that I think we can all relate to is when we're younger, we tend to want to work out for aesthetic reasons because we're trying to attract a mate. I mean, that, that's basically what, right? I and mean, that's why young people sure. work out. You know, you'll hear young people, yeah, well, I want to be fit. And, and, and yeah, if they're athletic, they do. But they want to meet girls and guys. That, that, that's why a lot of people, you know, work out when they're younger. Um, sure. And that's okay. And that's okay, right? It's, it's a good motivational um, factor. <laughs> yes, it is. Absolutely right, for sure. And and um, and also, again, if, if they're athletic and they, they, they're part of a sports team, that certainly can be uh, a pulling. But I think you, you raise a good point, which is imagine what you want to be able to do in the future. So it's not just exercising for the sake of exercising. If you can project yourself in the future, you want to be able to hold and run around with grandkids. You want to be able to uh, fix things around the house. Um, you want to be able to travel. So you kind of project in the future things that you want to be able to do so you can live a longer, healthier, happier life. And that's what's pulling you in that direction. Because if you say, well, yeah, I just, you know, I want to be in good shape. Okay, yeah, but for what? Why do you want to be in good shape? Well, I just want to have more energy. Well, well, that's okay. That that's actually good too. But why? What is the purpose behind wanting these things? Um, and so, I think everyone needs to ask themselves that question. It would be helpful if they asked themselves that question: What am I doing this for? Okay. So, when you think about it, other than avoiding a heart problem, which again is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but what are you doing this for? What do you see yourself wanting to be able to do in one, five, 10 years? So something that, that we talk a lot about on this channel is we, we look at prophecy and, and I believe we're living in a time where, you know, we could see some, some very difficult times. Let's just say mm -hmm. some, some biblical type stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't really feel like if my car broke down and I had to walk home from the grocery store <laughs> that I do all that well right now. Right. Um, especially if I was carrying things like groceries or so, you know, so we'll fast forward 10 years. If there is a season in this country where, you know, we're doing without luxuries, uh, maybe we're having to defend ourselves for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it's, you know, there's, Things that are real easy to get now are suddenly hard to get. So you got to right. work hard for the simple things. Right, right. Um, I just, I, I, there's no way I'm ready for that. I'm not right. even kind of ready for that, to be quite honest. Right. And that is, you know, outside of my health, that is the piece that I, you know, I'd like to be 80 years old and be able to hike up a giant mountain if necessary. Right. So you want to be self-sufficient. You want to be resilient. You want to be independent for as long as you possibly can and be able to rely on and depend on yourself um, and, and not necessarily to the exclusion of others. You know, we need each other, but you want to be able to be in the best shape you can to deal with as many adversities as show up, right? And be in a good position. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay. So that in and of itself and if you can, can you literally picture yourself in your mind's eye being in the shape and condition and doing things that you would like to be able to do, walking four or five miles, carrying something, going up a mountain, farming, hunting if you needed to, uh, whatever you need to do to give yourself that confidence and self-assurance, can you, can you picture that and see yourself doing that in the future? Um, I definitely can. Yeah, I absolutely can picture it because part of that, um, and I've shared this with you and I've shared it with viewers, but I'll just mention here as part of it is it's not just working out. It's also, um, you know, I'm taking a jujitsu class now. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of firearms training, um, just some general self-defense with knives and guns kind of thing, you know, so I'm trying to not just be in great shape, but be prepared if, 
necessary. I, well, I yes. would I could picture myself as a very strong, uh, able-bodied 65, 70 year old. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you know, look, I, I think that you know, you mentioned a particular uh things that you're concerned about. And I think it's good to have clarity on what you're looking for. But but I, I would say, Mark, that um whatever the issue is, even if a person just said, I want to be able to hold my grandchildren when I'm mm -hmm. that is a goal, right? I want to be able to walk and not have to have a, a walker or a cane because um, I want to be in the best shape I can be. I want to be able to work in my garden. All of those, I want to be able to enjoy nature and, you know, Nature is there's rocks and hills and you got to kind of maneuver. That's not flat ground, but I want to be able to enjoy and pre appreciate nature. And I want to be in the best position I can. Um, and, and again, if, if there are greater adversities that, that may come, you also want to be prepared for that, but, but seeing yourself and imagining yourself doing it and feeling good about doing that, that can be what pulls you. Um, so it's not just fear that pushes a person but a, 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 a positive that pulls you as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, another thing to think about when you're not feeling motivated or this procrastination mark is, is there a positive intent to not doing it? Right. And, I, and I'll give you an example. Um, <clears throat> let's say, <clears throat> and we need something a little different here. Let's say a person wants to be social and go out and meet people, uh, but they never do. And you think, well, that doesn't make sense. You know, you say you want to meet people, but you're not going out and meeting people. What, what could be the positive intent? Well, they don't want to be rejected. That's the fear. They don't want to be rich. So there is an intent to not doing what you say you want to do. I'm protecting myself so I don't get hurt. Now, is that worth not going out? I would say no. You got to take the risk and go out so you can meet people. But there, there is a reason why very often we're not doing what we say we want to do. And it's important to acknowledge that. So maybe there's some, when you're not going, maybe it's because you don't have the energy to do your videos. Maybe it's less time with your family. Maybe, you know, um, maybe doing it is an acknowledgement. Something might be coming and it is a little scary to acknowledge. There, there, there may be some positive intent behind not doing what you say you want to do. Mm -hmm. And to at least acknowledge that. Now, it doesn't mean give into it, but acknowledging, basically, it's not beating yourself up. I say I want to work out, and yet I don't work out. Oh, I'm so weak. I, I can't. No, no. There may be reasons why you're not, you're not pulled. Acknowledge it. Don't give into it, but at least acknowledge that there is a reason for your reluctance or hesitation or lack of motivation. Mm -hmm. I think for me, because as you were talking, I was trying to reflect, well, what is it, you know, that keeps me because like in the morning, it's usually because, you know, I'm enjoying a nice hot, hot cup of coffee. I'm looking out the window. I'm kind of maybe catching up on the news. I don't want to work out. Right. And then, I'm, you know, and then I start, then I get to work. I get into the next thing and the next thing. And then in my head, I, well, when I'm done working, I'm going to go, then I'll go work out. But right. when you're done working, right, it's the last thing you want to do. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think it's more, I'm just enjoying the moment more. Yes. Not working. Yes. Out, if that makes sense. Yes. Especially if your job uh, is very demanding and, and whose job isn't demanding. Mm -hmm. um, the idea that you have some quiet time in the morning to look out the window, to enjoy it at the end of the day to unwind. Yes. There, I think there are very good reasons to not work out and put in the effort. The question then is, is the reasons for doing it, like almost like a pro-con? There are both. There are pros and cons to waking up early and going to the gym or running to the gym when your day is over, before you relax and just kind of you're, you're on the clock, you keep going. There are pros and cons to both. If the pro to working out doesn't outweigh the cons, why do it? Right. And you won't do it unless the pros do outweigh the cons, because why would you? And then that, okay, so I see. So that's why it's important to bring up the cons 
that way you could do that weight. I see. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And just acknowledging and acknowledging that there are cons for anything mm -hmm. that we do. It's not because we're bad people. You know, I'm weak and I can't. No, there are reasons to not do even good things. And we don't want to deny that. We don't want to acknowledge it. But hopefully the good reasons more than outweigh the bad reasons. Absolutely. <laughs> Gosh, that's good. Um, did you go to the gym today? I'm going right after we speak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right after. I've got my sweatpants. You can't see. I got my shirt, but I got my sweatpants on and I'm ready to go as soon as we're done. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> hey, when I get to New York City, you'll take me to the gym? Yes, I will take you as my guest and we'll work to a good workout. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, Mike, I really appreciate it. this piece was big for me to just because I just know who I am. And mm -hmm. unless I can change the way I think, absolutely. I feel like I'm just wasting time. I'm just running on a treadmill kind of thing. And and I I, I knew this was a big piece. And we've been talking about this for yeah months now actually yes I'm glad we got to finally connect and do this yeah uh, i do believe that this is going to change things um how often would you like do you think it'd be wise to talk well uh, that's that's up to you i mean obviously when i when i work with people when i coach people it it is either um once a week or every once every two weeks it depends on the severity of the issue and it depends on the time or what have you um Usually when I'm working with people, it's it's once a week, once every other week. After a while, it can be every month, once a month, just as a check-in. But as we're developing skills and practicing and working on things, it's usually once every two weeks or once every week. So yeah. whatever we can figure out time for and whatever works for our schedules um, is, is good for me. Let's try every two weeks. Let's start okay. with that. Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and also, I know you do, you train in jujitsu, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks like it hurts my knee and neck and back really bad. Is it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I think the, I think it's the martial arts piece that really kind of, you know, it's uh, yes, you, you feel that uh, it's, it's a, it's a fighting art and you feel it. Um, but also part of it is getting used to it too. Sure. You know, there sure, are people, sure. and you'll see models. this if you research, there are people that are in their eighties and nineties and you've seen the, the softer martial arts, the Tai Chi where people are slowly moving and, a lot of older people in China, um, you know, practice that. So as you get more practice, it does feel more formal and you get more limber. And it really is a great, a great workout as well. Martial arts as, as, as in addition to having a practical battle. It, it seems like an incredible workout, actually. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Um, if you don't mind me asking the last question, when you go to the gym, what, what kind of time do you spend there? I, I decide that I'm not going to live there. I know some people are gym rats. Um, I try not to, I try to do a good 30, 35 minute workout. Um, I don't want to do it more than 45 minutes. If I can do it for a half an hour, um, and get a good workout. Um, I do try to alternate between weights and cardio. Uh, but I know that if I spend like an hour there, I'm, I, I know I'm going to be stuck there for an hour. It, that's not going to work for me. Um, so a good half an hour, 35 minutes of weights or cardio, and I kind of alternate. Mm -hmm. um, and I do try to go at least four days, uh, if not five days a week. Um, so I do I do go quite a bit. But if it's only for a half an hour, 35 minutes, it's doable. I, I can I can fit that into my schedule. That's great. And I see now, you know, because obviously if you go an hour, because then the, the the negatives are outweighing the positives at that point. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I I wanted... That's good stuff, Mike. Yes. I'm, I'm glad you're my friend. The <laughs> mental piece is really important. So I'm glad you're bringing that up. It's not just the physical, right? Mm -hmm. It is, it is the mental that can do us in if we're not careful for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Cause I mean, I, and I knew this, I knew the way you were going to help me was the mental. Cause it, you know, I, I so far I've not asked, well, what workouts do you do or what do you recommend for the, it's just all about how Yes. Can we change our mind to become athletes? Because the difference between, I think, you know, a 400 pound guy that can't get off the couch um, and an athlete at the top of his game, I believe is just all in the head. It, it is absolutely. It is, it is the mental piece that really makes the difference. And especially even if you see two great physical athletes, the one who has an advantage is the one that has that mental piece. Mm -hmm. True that. True yeah. that. 
Well, Mike, I always appreciate you. You're such a dear oh. friend. I, I always thank you for your time. And, uh, and and I look forward to seeing you in New York City in person soon. Well, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you about this again. Absolutely. And if anybody wanted to reach out to you, um, I'll put your phone number best. Is that down below or what would you Yeah, like? you could put, um, you know, you could put the um, uh, website um, yeah. that I have. And you can also put um, the uh, email, my professional email. I'll, I'll give it to you. Uh, I know we have personal, but I can give you that professional. All right. So anybody interested in chatting with Mike, that link is below. I can vouch. I've known you for how long have we known? We, at least 2009. Two th I think we, yeah. we started working 2000, September 2010. We started okay. in um, at the, when we opened up that school. Mm -hmm. yeah. So since then, uh, yes. you've been a tremendous help to me. Um, and I that's this is how I can share. I know it'll I know you got some good stuff in your brain. there. <laughs> I, know well, I appreciate sure. that. And, I, and I'm excited to see your journey on this, too. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Me as well. All right. Well, I'll keep talking to you. Mike. <laughs> Thank you.